Hey everyone, it's hashtag Malkin Live, the post debate edition. I am going to uh, let people stream in on Facebook and YouTube, waiting to see if uh, people will be able to come on. And uh, I just got off of a Newsmax segment with some of my thoughts about the debate, and I want to get all of yours. Uh, so let me know in comments, just shout out to me um, where you watched the debate. I hope you were not watching it on one of the cable news networks that uh, is responsible for making the debate leaker Donna Brazil a star again. <coughs> either one of them, right? CNN or Fox News. I mean, how heinous was that? Donna Brazil, Hillary's debate leaker, CNN's leftovers, doing debate commentary on Fox News. What is that? Uh, so where did you all watch it? You could um, watch it on Newsmax, of course, where I'm a contributor and show host now. Hope you did. I see a lot of, of you watched it online on Right Side Broadcast, Breitbart. Yes, Newsmax K. Dunn. Yay, that's what I want to hear. Switch to Newsmax, okay? Uh, and I'm already seeing, of course, many of you shared my thoughts about, uh, well, I called him Nurse Chris Wallace, okay? Because he was basically the nurse's aide for Joe Biden. Uh, part of the time he spent as a nurse's aide rescuing Joe Biden, giving him lifelines the entire time. It is it was a two on one debate. Am I right? Am I right? But really, have we expected anything less from these biased, rigged presidential debates over the last five or six election cycles? Come on. OK, that's the reality check there. Let's see. Other people watch it on C-SPAN. That's always a good idea. Newsmax. Thank you, Bob Hernandez. Um, we got a lot of good post-debate analysis. I was just on a segment uh, talking about uh, my views, which I'll share with you. But I'm just allowing people to trickle in here. We've got several thousand people. That's very cool. Um, I, I, you know, I'm all made up, right? Got my makeup on. This is not usually how I look at uh, close to 10 o'clock at night mountain time. But I thought, well, I might as well pop in since I was all made up for for Newsmax. Let's see. Charles Black agrees with me that it was a two on one debate. Nothing new. And uh, let's see, Andy Waldrop says, I didn't watch it. I sampled it and it was awful. I'm coming here to get your impression. Well, I'm going to share my impression with you. And I said this on the air on Newsmax. And I also said this in response to a, uh, this is a very typical conservatism Inc. take, uh, virtue signaling take from Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro. He wrote uh, about an hour ago, I literally have no idea who won this debate. I just know we all lost. Speak for yourself, drama queen. I just know we all lost. No, actually, it was very clear who won the debate. Donald Trump won the debate. Anyone who supports law and order and opposes anarcho tyranny and sees things very clearly in the moral framework of right versus wrong and good versus evil knows who won the debate. Am I right? Oh, oh, oh. You know, we got all of the teeth gnashers and navel gazers who think, oh, it should have been more civil. And, and why was President Trump so combative? Because that's how people win, okay? I voted for President Trump in 2016 because I was sick of weak need, weak tea, liberal Republicans who think it's more important to have civil discourse with people who want to destroy our country, right, than it is to fight back. And that's what we saw. We saw President Trump fight back on issues that are very substantive and very important. For example, critical race theory. The idea that all white people are guilty, all white people are the worst, most hateful people in the world. He's eliminated that kind of propaganda from federal government agencies. And 
Chris Wallace is so troubled. By the way, Chris Wallace, you are not the co-debater, right? And yet every single one of these journalists who is handpicked by the Commission on Presidential Debates thinks of themselves as someone whose opinion we care about. We don't. And if you agree with me, press Y in comments, right? I don't care, Chris Wallace, that you've done your research or that you have concerns about the elimination of critical race theory. I don't care. I don't give a rat's behind what you think about climate change. I don't care about climate change. I don't care. Very few people care. People in the Beltway care. People in academia care. Hollywood celebrities like Leonardo DiCaprio who go jetting around on their Gulfstream jets uh, to give lectures at global summits about climate change care, right? We don't care. How come we didn't get a single question about immigration, about border control, about the impact of mass migration on our country and our sovereignty. How about that? Oh no, ordinary people care about that. American workers who've been displaced by H-1Bs care about that. Uh, I joked tonight that if there were an H-1B program that was sending in low wage journalists from India and China to replace blowhards like Chris Wallace, and the entire Beltway Press, then they would care, right? Then it would be a debate topic. It would be front and center. They'd care all about it. We get all the questions about the uh, wage impact of importing massive numbers of foreign journalists into, into the country. No, no, climate change, climate change. So tell me in comments, everyone, what some of your favorite moments from the debate were. I'd really like to know. So like I said, I did this, uh, this short segment with Alan Dershowitz on Newsmax. And like many of these pundits that I've been seeing now on TV, elsewhere on TV, as well as on social media, and, and have the same attitude as Ben Shapiro, oh, this was such a terrible debate. We didn't learn anything. We need more substance. No, it was terrible because it was rigged. And I have written about this many times over the years. And I want to remind you of what some of the past debates have been like, the presidential debates. This is nothing new. Nothing new. Uh, the Commission on Presidential Debates has been in charge of uh, the presidential debates since 1988. And I did a review of uh, the preceding three cycles, 2008, 2012, and 2016. You may remember, I certainly do, when the Commission on Presidential Debates allowed Gwen Ifill right, from PBS, liberal PBS, to serve as the moderator for the one vice presidential debate of that cycle. And at the time, she failed to disclose that she had a book coming out January 20th, 2009, right, that just so happened to coincide with the inauguration, titled Breakthrough, Politics and Race in the Age of Obama. It hyped the Obama campaign as stunning. It marveled at his bold new path to political power. And yet she pretended to have a veneer of objectivity. Moderator, right? She was an eh moderator, okay? And the Commission on Presidential Debates continued to cast itself as nonpartisan, right? You had this array of diversity moderators like Gwen Ifill. There was a, uh, a liberal Asian anchor, Elaine Quijano, uh, who was allowed to be a moderator. And then, of course, one of these Telemundo uh, open borders types, Maria Celeste uh, Araras. 2012, do you remember who one of the most notorious debate moderators was? Candy Crowley. Very much like Chris Wallace in injecting herself into the debate and arguing with the Republican nominee while running interference for the Democrat. It's the same template 
over and over and over again. Uh, and of course, uh, after Crowley, we had this uh, train wreck of a moderator in 2016, Martha Raddatz, right? Uh, there was also Anderson Cooper of CNN. Uh, and uh, you may remember when Martha Raddatz totally lost her marbles over some question about Syria and was in near tears scrapping with Donald Trump. This is what we get. Okay. And what are you supposed to do if you're the Republican nominee having to debate not only the Democrat opponent, but one or two or three liberals, Democrat operatives posing as journalists? You have to fight back. You have to get down and dirty. And that's what this president did tonight. And I applauded every moment. What do you guys think? Erica Vasquez says, Chris Wallace is a hack. Absolutely right. And a third rate one at that. Which is why, of course, you should be switching to Newsmax. That is my slogan for the night. One of my slogans for the, for the night. Trump was a lion, uh, Edie says. Uh, I agree. And I'll tell you, one of the most significant moments and I know you all marked this when it happened. There's Chris Wallace demanding that President Trump disavow so-called white nationalists while he did nothing to demand any kind of parallel disavowal from Joe Biden regarding the domestic terrorist organizations Antifa and Black Lives Matter. And President Trump Trump did an excellent job of rejecting the false premise of the question, right? This is Chris Wallace acting essentially as a Southern Poverty Law Center agent because time and time again, conservative patriots who stand up for their first and second amendment rights have been falsely smeared all uh, in a blanket characterization as quote unquote white nationalists, okay? I have been labeled a white nationalist by these lying propagandists and President Trump did not fall into the trap, right? So the name of the Proud Boys came up and what did President Tr Trump do? Unlike some spineless Republicans, President Trump did not run away. He did not throw his supporters under the bus. And he said something like uh, Proud Boy should stand back and stand by. Um, of course, you know, having been in this fight for so long, having stood up for the Proud Boys and many of the people who were on the front lines out there on the streets when nobody else is willing to do it, I wish he had gone further. I wish he had made a, an explicit um, endorsement of our right to self-defense. Uh, and I wish that he had explicitly uh, talked about the fact that uh, liberal prosecutors, Democrat partisans like Cyrus Vance in New York City have unjustly convicted Proud Boys who are simply defending themselves. But at this point, what more could you ask for uh, from a, a president who has done something that no other Republican establishment liberal or moderate would have done? God bless that man. And yes, I am proud of our boys. Uh, that was a huge moment. Of course, everybody on the left is absolutely losing their minds over it. What did Joe Biden do? He immediately went to the fake news lies about Charlottesville. Uh, the good people line that everybody knows has been completely uh, debunked. And the fact is that when President Trump was talking about good people, he was talking about the good people who were standing up in defense of monuments that have been torn down left and right, left and left, right, really, uh, torn down uh, since Charlottesville. And of course, uh, that, that entire campaign, that war on our heritage has escalated over the last year. President Trump is on the right side of that war and Joe Biden is on the wrong side. Many of you also noted that when Joe Biden uh, was talking about Antifa, he echoed the fake propaganda and gaslighting that Antifa is merely an idea, that it does not constitute specific 
groups of domestic terrorist rings, which is absolutely false. And it starts with the oldest chapter of Antifa, the Rose City Antifa, which is highlighted in Open Borders Incorporated. Um, they've been involved in the Occupy uh, ICE chaos um, from several years ago, all the way leading up through George Floyd Apalooza. Uh, and these domestic terrorist sub chapters, of course, have been responsible for violence across the country. Violence, which that weak need loser, and boy, was he weak and fragile tonight, don't you think, Joe Biden? Creaky, weaky uh, Joe Biden uh, refused to disavow. So those are some of the moments that um, I thought were really significant. And no, it's not highbrow parliamentary debate. It's just the reality of the political times that we live in. Uh, and I thought Trump rose to the occasion, plain and simple. One other topic that I want to get to, because it's the topic of my uh, column today, and as uh, many of you who were tuning into my live stream yesterday saw, uh, the topic of election integrity. Uh, and I thought that Trump did a fairly effective job of um, raising the red flag about the fraud that is happening now and the fraud that is to come. I wish that he had explicitly given a shout out to the work that Project Veritas and James O'Keefe uh, have done in Minnesota. Those of you who watched my live stream yesterday saw Steve Draskowski, who really is the hero in all of this, uh, the driving force in the Minnesota State Legislature, Republican, um, who is responsible for bringing these key uh, complaints, the state campaign finance complaint against Ilan Omar, and then raising all of the issues in letters to Congress, to the uh, Justice Department, the FBI about the immigration fraud, the tax fraud, uh, and of course the election fraud as well. I wish he had mentioned that. He didn't, but he mentioned other examples of uh, ballot fraud and election fraud ac across the country. And there is one solution to this, of course. Well, there's two solutions, right? Vote in person and get out there and meet these fraudsters in full force volunteer to be an election observer, sign up uh, with True the Vote, go to truethevote.com. I think uh, somebody mentioned to me when I was in Waukesha County, Wisconsin last week that there's a group called Defend the Ballots as well. Um, get, get election training from uh, your county clerk, get involved, get out there. You know, not all of us can be out on the, the streets uh, uh, countering the mob and whatnot, but this is an, a role that, uh, people can definitely play, especially if you're involved in your uh, local Republican Party chapters. Yes? Yes. Um, so my column today fleshes out what I talked about with Vicki McKenna on uh, the first of my live streams yesterday. And that is a group called the Center for Tech and Civic Life, uh, which is sponsoring what I believe and what Vicki believes and many others believe is the illegal ballot harvesting scheme. And they've poured uh, millions and millions of dollars into setting up these campaigns under the guise of election integrity in key battleground states. And what they're essentially doing is giving a leg up to Biden. Uh, what Vicki McKenna said about getting past the margin of fraud is so important, especially in a state like uh, Wisconsin or Minnesota, for example, where you've had Senate elections uh, that were decided by something like 300 votes. That was the Al Franken uh, Senate election with uh, Norm Coleman, or in a state like Wisconsin where Trump won by a less than 1% margin, which is just absolutely stunning when, uh, when you think about it. Um, so, all of that, you know, incredibly important. Yes, it was substantive. No, you know, it, it wasn't the Harvard debating society, um, but uh, we got what we needed to know, don't you think? Uh, Trump was strong, he was dominant, he was domineering. And no, you know, Joe Biden didn't faint in the middle of it, uh, didn't need to be picked up off the floor, uh, didn't have, you know, major glitches uh, in the matrix, but, to me, he came off as weak. His voice was thin. 
He was looking down at the ground. And, you know, I know it's a joke to talk about uh, body language experts or, or whatnot, but optically, Trump looks strong and Joe Biden looked weak, weak. Uh, and you know that, uh, that uh, Trump really got under his skin when he reeled off all of the sins of Hunter Biden. Every word of it true. And look what happened. Uh, Trump went for the jugular. Biden couldn't defend his corruptocrat son. Now, many of you will remember, of course, that all of that is old hat. That's all territory that I covered in my chapter on the Bidens in Culture of Corruption back in 2009. Um, and it is still relevant, more relevant today than ever. But what happened? Trump was in the middle of pummeling Joe Biden over it. And here comes nurse Chris Wallace to provide more aid and crutches to help Joe Biden and hand him another lifeline. I can't remember if that was the exact moment, but you know there was a moment where Trump was just scoring over and over and over again. And here comes Chris Wallace to say, okay, now let's talk about climate change. Let's talk about climate change. Let's not. <laughs> let's not. So let's see. I'm going to see if there's been any announcement about who the next debate moderators are and when that debate is, because I believe it's scheduled for October... Ace, let me see. Let me bring this up for you. So, okay, there's a vice presidential debate on August, uh, October 7th in Utah. Do they have the moderator announced for that yet? I don't think so. Uh, so that's the vice presidential debate. The second presidential debate is scheduled for October 15th in Miami, Florida. And then the third presidential debate is October 26th, uh, 22nd, sorry, in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing a, uh, which uh, liberal operatives masquerading as objective journalists have been named yet. But I had my nomination for who I think should nominate, uh, should uh, moderate a debate and which subject sh it should be. I vote for Tucker Carlson to do a 90 minute debate on America first issues and the impact of mass migration, both illegal immigration and legal immigration, refugee resettlement, guest worker programs, the entire gamut of it. What do you all think of that? Yes, oh, I see a lot of yeses in the comments. Uh, of course, it's never gonna happen. And you know, the sooner that the Commission on Presidential Debates was abolished, the better. But this is the Republican Party's fault, right? Because they go through these negotiations and they have to consent to all of this. And so they're willingly volunteering to play the game with these people. I wish that the Republican Party would do what President Trump did when he said, yeah, I'm not going to go to the White House Correspondents' Dinner anymore. I'm not going to play ball with all of these liberal operatives, right? These members of the fourth estate who are basically in bed with the deep estate who hate me. Why would I make their uh, dinner a success? Why would I draw them viewers? Why would I help them raise money? You know, walk away, right? There's a hashtag walk away for you. But no, they got to play the game. I see a lot of votes for uh, Tucker and an immigration mass migration debate. Well, I put it out there in a hashtag on uh, Twitter. So if you're using Twitter, go retweet that tweet. Um, I think it would be a fantastic idea. Uh, it won't happen, but I'd love it. Somebody says Lou Dobbs as well. Well, that would be super cool, right? To actually have a panel of moderators who know what the hell they're talking about, right? And who are equally as hard on the Republican establishment as they are on the Democrat establishment. Nobody has nominated me, but I would be happy to be a debate moderator. <laughs> um, so, 
Oh, well, that's very nice. Michael Corner says Carlson Malkin 2024 or Malkin Carlson 2024. Yeah, see, the problem with that is I hate D.C. I mean, I consider running for mayor of Colorado Springs or even governor of Colorado, but anything that would send me back to D.C., uh, nah. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. Um, but that's very flattering. I would like to be able to go fishing with Tucker Carlson sometime. Uh, so that would be good. I hope I don't have to wait till 2024 to, to do that. Oh, thank you. People are now saying because I volunteered myself as a moderator that they think that I would be great. Thank you, William Gaynor. Uh, let's see. Oh, somebody has my vote for, I guess, uh, Colorado Springs mayor or uh, governor of Colorado. Yeah, well, I'm suing our governor still. That's ongoing. Our suit against uh, Emperor Jared Polis on the mask mandate and all of the anti-lockdown power grabs. And um, uh, by the way, we are also moving forward with our lawsuit against the city of Denver uh, and other Denver officials over the fiasco with our Back the Blue rally. Um, Wallace was biased. Agree. Yes, Mark. I just got done a basically a 30 minute rant on that. Um, and he was not just biased. He was rude. Half the time, like I said, he was a nurse's aide for Joe Biden. And the other half of the time he was a school marm. That's what I called him, a school marm, trying to wrap the knuckles of, of President Trump, always interrupting uh, President Trump when he was in the middle of the thought and then whining if President Trump interrupted Biden, but then sitting quiet as a church mouse uh, if Biden interrupted Trump. The whole thing's such a joke. It's such kabuki theater, don't you think? But we had to watch it. I mean, it's a historic moment, right? No, it, it, it's not just some sort of obligatory perfunctory thing. It was a part of history and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I'm not going to be one of these pretend virtue signalers saying, oh, it's so terrible, the state of discourse in America. Why couldn't we get a, a more a substantive debate? I'll tell you something else. And some of you may disagree with me on this. Okay. But I keep seeing this guy, Joe Rogan's name mentioned. Oh, why can't we have a five hour debate with Joe Rogan? Joe Rogan is some liberal celebrity who now is, uh, you know, somebody who lots of these con ink type people just like seek his approbation or something like that. And I know even President Trump said, sure, I'll do a Joe Rogan debate. I mean, he'll do a debate anywhere. But like, why? Why? What, 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 what does Joe Rogan know about America first issues and, and policies? Okay, I understand he like, he's very physically fit and he trains, right? Okay, but like, what, what is that? Right. You say that you want substantive to some sense of debate and then you're like, you want to go with some. Who cares? I don't care. I just I, I don't know. Tell me what you think. Maybe I'm missing something. Uh, hater on Joe Rogan. Good luck with that. It's not that I hate him. I just I don't really care. I don't I don't know him. I don't listen to him. Uh, there's a gazillion other people I'd rather have moderate uh, a debate on issues that I care about who actually know about things I care about. Um, and that's why I nominate Tucker. I nominate Tucker for a debate. Joe Rogan has a big audience. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of people do. Too much of a circus. Um, Joe Rogan University says Michelle is a dumb bozo. Well, you really won me over there. Thanks. I learned a lot from Joe Rogan <laughs> University. Yeah. And didn't that guy come out for Bernie Sanders anyway? So, like, we already have all of these liberal journalists acting as so-called moderators. Like, why is that going to be any different? Just saying. Joe Rogan would be entertaining. All right. Yep. Um, okay. So, uh, what else? I have about 10 more minutes left. So if any of you have any other questions, observations, I said my piece about all that. Somebody says Jim Lehrer was a good moderator. Eh, you know, that was a totally different era and time back then, wasn't it? Um, I mean, I remember all the way back to, uh, you know, when you had these uh, 
liberal journalists like Lisa Myers going on the attack against uh, uh, Republicans and in, in, even in the, in the Republican primary debates as well. Um, it's been a joke forever. I think that's what we have to remember about the, the context of uh, the Commission on Presidential uh, Debate run circuses. Yeah. Cleveland won tonight, Mary Kay Borden says. That is an interesting observation. And of course, beforehand, there was a lot of gearing up of uh, all of the agitation groups, including the Sunrise Movement, which I wrote about last week. I noticed that they were front and center. And uh, there was a huge uh, mobilization of police force and um, uh, troops, National Guard troops. Uh, they had a restricted zone around the presidential debate, and it, it looks like things were kept under control. Let's see, what is it, past midnight now, Eastern time? And, and it looks like things were mostly peaceful because uh, law enforcement was out on the streets. So I agree with that, Mary. Yes, it was a win for Cleveland. And um, you know, I guess it's not too late for things to happen, but it looks like it looks like uh, things were uh, pretty under control there. Can you comment on a third party? Monica says I want to tell some people. Oops, where did the question go? Uh, I know how bad that would be. Well, yeah. We just don't have a system that's set up to sustain successfully a third party. And a lot of it just has to do with um, lack of funding. Uh, you know, we, I, all of the left-wing billionaires are very happy with the uniparty, right? With Open Borders Incorporated. Doesn't matter if it's D or R, for the most part, they will get what they want. And, uh, you know, that is one of the things that I, I wish we could make more progress on with, uh, with Trump. Uh, it's a constant battle. It was a battle over the executive order to limit immigration into the country under COVID con conditions. But of course, we should be limiting um, so much of the replacement of American workers absent COVID conditions. Unfortunately, there are many Open Borders Inc. operatives that answer to Tim Cook rather than to the American people who are even ensconced in the White House. We've talked about that battle in the West Wing. Jared Kushner, Ivanka Trump, Christopher Little, Brooke Rollins. If you don't know these names, you should Google them. You should look up uh, the tweets and reports and threads that I've done on these people. And uh, many of us in the America First movement are certainly hoping that if we get another four years, that those people will be on the outs. I mean, it's very difficult because, of course, Ivanka is the golden daughter, the golden child. But if you look at the things that she espouses, they undermine the Make America Great agenda. I'm just trying to get this through people's heads because, you know, they want to they, they, they want to sort of delude themselves into thinking, well, if Trump trusts them, then they must be um, for us. Those two are not OK. Bad. They're bad. Um, my friend Pedro Gonzalez, by who, by the way, was on Tucker Carlson tonight, has done excellent reporting on uh, the Jared Kushner, Ivanka Trump, open borders agenda. Go to American Greatness, look it up. I'll throw in some uh, links uh, once these live streams are posted, um, the archived at YouTube and, and Facebook, but do your homework, do your homework. And I know that the audience is, is fairly split here. Um, you know, I'm just looking at the scrolling of the comments and uh, you know, a lot of you, our, our America Firsters, you know exactly what I'm talking about, and others of you are very puzzled. You know, some people, some people who are more normie is the word that we use, right? Who are more normie are like, why are you going? Why are you attacking Jared Kushner? Jared Kushner does not re represent MAGA, and that's why. That's why, because he lobbies for big business and he runs interference for Silicon Valley, and these people are enemies of President Trump. They're enemies of the American people. Okay, that's all I got to say about that for now. Um, about five more minutes. So if you have other questions, suggestions for guests for future Malkin Lives and Sovereign Nations, let me know. By the way, if you are not tuning into my show on Saturdays on Newsmax, 
I'm going to have to ch -ch -ch give you a spanking. Come on. Sovereign Nation. Uh, every Saturday night on Newsmax. I think we'll be back to our normal time, which is 7 p.m. Eastern. Last week we were on in, in prime time uh, because of the uh, live coverage of the Trump rally. But back to 7 p.m. this week re-airs 11 a.m. on Sundays. And, um, and we're going to be covering voter fraud in depth. The funding behind it, the groups behind it. Uh, so make sure that you email me. I'm going to post this in comments, my email. If you've got voter fraud stories that you want to share with me, I'm at Michelle Malkin Investigates at ProtonMail.com. There it is in the comments right now. Uh, ha ha. Oralay says, careful, Michelle, you might excite some followers with all of my spanking talk. <laughs> it's getting late. <laughs> Uh, voter fraud, someone says, is the number one issue. Well, you know, between now and Election Day, you've got all of these forces who are gearing up. And uh, it's the illegal ballot harvesting that's taking place in public parks, funded with private philanthropy and uh, Zuckerberg money, Google money, Rockefeller Foundation money. You've got all the people agitating in the streets. What are conservatives, what are Republican um, entities doing to meet these forces on the streets, at the ballot boxes, um, at the polling places? How many of you remember, this is, a, this is a flashback, okay? The new Black Panther Party showing up at the polls to menace voters on election day in Philadelphia. Y'all remember that? You remember that the Obama Injustice Department and the Attorney General, corrupter of the law, not defender of the law, Eric Holder, dropped the investigation and case against the new Black Panther Party? Yep, I know you all do. I know you all do. Well, that's going to be a drop in the bucket compared to what these people are going to be doing on this election day, right? These people are absolutely un hinged. How many of you remember the book I wrote called Unhinged in 2006? <sighs> I could do a whole encyclopedia series on it, all right? Every day you get one of these new videos, especially of these, these liberal women losing their minds in their cars. Somebody needs to be arresting them. No liberal woman right now should be allowed to operate a vehicle while their smartphone camera is on them. Have, like, have you seen these? I mean, they're just insane. They're insane. When Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, um, I mean, just, just any little trigger. And there they are screaming at the top of their lungs to a phone that's live streaming while they're operating a vehicle. This is incredibly dangerous. The, 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 these people are have gone completely nutso. It's scary. And there's no escape from it. I mean, it's not just happening in, in big cities, right? It's in it's in every neighborhood. It's in every neighborhood. You know, you've got these Antifa people and these Black Lives Matter people who are harassing patrons of restaurants on outdoor patios. And meanwhile, of course, you've got parents who are being arrested in the stands of their uh, kids' high school football stadiums for not wearing masks. Or at their school board meetings, being arrested for not wearing masks. Or for praying. Or for singing hymns. And this what is what this election is all about about shut down the mob reopen america vote in person that's it so it's 12 30 a.m eastern time it's about 10 30 here i'm gonna wash off all of this tv makeup from my newsmax appearance thank you all for joining me
And I will see you in a future hashtag Malkin Live, as well as on Newsmax for my regular appearances. I'm going to be on the Greg Kelly Show Friday night, uh, Carl Higby Saturday morning, and of course, Saturday evening, 7 p.m., Sovereign Nation re-airs on Sunday at 11. Good night, everybody. Take care. I'm going to change into my pajamas.